we're joined today by Jonathan Lai of Auxilium Financial Risk Management. Um, thanks for joining us, Jonathan. Maybe for those who don't know, just explain a little bit more about the business. What I do is focus on financial risk, and that is interest rate, foreign exchange, and inflation risk management. And my clients are typically real estate investors. So what we're looking at is the interest rate, the exposure that they might have associated with the debt that they have against the asset. If they've made cross-border investments, then it will be uh, the FX exposure that that leads to. And more recently, there's been quite a focus on inflation and people thinking about how that might impact the value of assets and the, the cash flows that they receive off those assets. From your point of view, um, I mean, we're looking now at, uh, at, at lower for longer in terms of interest rates, bond yields. Um, how do you see that influencing particularly the real estate markets? It's interesting you say lower for longer um, because I'm not necessarily sure that is what will happen. Now, clearly the central banks have at the moment stepped in. They've increased their, their um, ability to buy bonds, which will keep the pricing down. And we've seen in the, in the UK, the Bank of England issuing a bond recently, a three-year bond um, that uh, was pricing at a negative rate. And that's the first time we've seen that in the UK. So that would back up what you're saying, but there's also going to be such a vast amount of debt issued that there's the idea that rates might come up because the demand won't be there. Uh, so the price will come down, the rate will come up. And that idea is something that's on my mind and certainly someone who thinks about uh, interest rate risk. It's something that I think has to be considered. So whilst the implication in what we've seen historically, rates have stayed lower for longer, this could be different. Uh, in the current environment. So I don't think it's a necessarily a given. And how do you see that influencing um, what's happening in terms of the, the real estate side? Will that have an impact on, on yields? On, on What's your sense of that? Real estate is valued as a, a spread over the, the government yield or over the risk-free rate. Now, if those rates come up, that um, spread uh, one would expect it to maintain, so that uh, would imply a, a, a lowering of the price and the value of the assets. Now, there's obviously an interplay with inflation here. With inflation-linked incomes, you'd hope that that increase in income will lead to an offset and maintain the asset value. So the interplay of the inflation and um, the interest rate is, is something that is is interesting. And the way that that that's going to play out over the next few years is 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 something that I, uh, um, investors are thinking about and uh, how they hedge that risk, how they think about their investments and uh, what that means, what the implications are for pricing. From your point of view, Jonathan, what, what should investors be particularly looking at and uh, you know what what numbers should they be looking at in order to be able to think about how they look at their strategy? Yeah, I think one of the things that's particularly important um, at the moment, as the Bank of England has, has particularly uh, drawn attention to this recently, and that's uh, the use of negative interest rates. It's been something that's been pretty much excluded up until this point, certainly in the UK. It's something we've seen in Europe, and it's, it's been continuing. But the impact of that is, is effectively to de devalue the debt over time. Now, often what you see in real estate loans is that they're flawed at zero. So if rates go negative, the, the, the LIBOR rate is reset at zero. So you don't get the benefit of that at lower rate. Um, so that is something I think that investors should be conscious of when they are looking at their debt and what the value of the floor actually is. Now, you can value that with them and compare it to a derivative instrument and say, well, it's worth... 3% or 2% of the notional value of the loan over the life of the instrument. And that gives you an idea, an ability to quantify what value is, is being, being left there at that point in time. Now, I know that that slightly contradicts what I said earlier in terms of maybe rates will go up. But I think certainly for this, this uh, period um, over the next uh, 12 months, maybe longer, there is the potential, and certainly from what the Bank of England said, of, of seeing potentially negative rates in the UK for the first time. It's something that's continuing in Europe. So uh, the, the flaw on the interest rate in debt is particularly interesting, and uh, the value of that and the cost that's being left on, or the value that's being left on the table by having it flawed. And that, I think, is a transparency that needs to come into 
do uh, debt negotiation. So something that investors should be thinking about when they're negotiating loans. Great. Um, thanks very much. Interesting. It'd be interesting to see how that evolves over time. Thanks very much for joining us, Jonathan. Thank you.